Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Gartner, double board certified plastic surgeon. And in today's video, we're gonna to react to what would happen if you didn't drink water and why it's so important. Water is virtually everywhere, from soil moisture and ice caps to the cells inside our own bodies. Depending on factors like location, fat index, age, and sex. So those things play a big role in water. Basically, fat has decreased water, muscle has increased water. So if you have a high BMI and more fat, your percentage of water will be less. Also, if you're more muscular and have a low BMI, your percentage of water will be higher. Age also impacts this. Men in general are more muscular, so they have higher water content. Women have less. Also, the older you are, you have less muscle. Your water content is less as we age because you have less muscle content. The average human is between 55 and 60% water. Most men are around 60 and women are around 55. So what role does water play in our bodies? And how much do we actually need to drink to stay healthy? The H2O in our bodies works to cushion and lubricate joints, regulate temperature, and to nourish the brain and spinal cord. It also works for transportation. Water is a large component of blood. Also digestion, saliva formation, nutrient dissolution, also maintaining cell functions for cell structure and cellular processes. Water isn't only in our blood. An adult's brain and heart are almost three quarters water. And the heart is mostly made of muscle. So that requires a lot of water in the muscle. The brain is mainly structure and facilitates essential processes like neurotransmission. That's roughly equivalent to the amount of moisture in a banana. Lungs are more similar to an apple at 83%. Now lungs need a lot of water for keeping the airways moist, producing and cleaning up mucus, facilitating gas exchange, protecting the lungs from bacteria, and supporting the immune system. And even seemingly dry human bones are 31% water. Water in bones adds to the flexibility and resistance of the bone. If we are essentially made of water and surrounded by water, why do we still need to drink so much? Well, each day we lose two to three liters through our sweat, urine, and bowel movements, and even just from breathing. While these functions are essential to our survival, we need to compensate for the fluid loss. Maintaining a balanced water level is essential to avoid dehydration or overhydration, both of which can have devastating effects on overall health. So you need to maintain your temperature, transportation of blood, lubricating and cushioning cellular functions, and digestion. Those are all vital things to have enough water intake. At first detection of low water levels, sensory receptors in the brain's hypothalamus signal the release of antidiuretic hormone. So this release is actually in a specific place called the posterior pituitary. And what it does is it reacts on the kidney collecting duct system to increase permeability and concentrate the urine. When it reaches the kidneys, it creates aquaporins, special channels that enable blood to absorb and retain more water leading to concentrated dark urine. Increased dehydration can cause notable drops in energy, mood, skin moisture, and blood pressure. So some of the initial signs of decreased water is signs of thirst, dry mouth, also headache, and muscle cramps. As well as signs of cognitive impairment. A dehydrated brain works harder to accomplish the same amount as a normal brain and it even temporarily shrinks because of its lack of water. Overhydration, or hyponatremia, is usually caused by overconsumption of water in a short amount of time. Athletes are often the victims of overhydration because of complications in regulating water levels in extreme physical conditions. And they need a lot of water because they have less fat and they have mostly more muscle than the average person. Whereas the dehydrated brain amps up the production of antidiuretic hormone, the overhydrated brain slows or even stops releasing it into the blood. Sodium electrolytes in the body become diluted, causing cells to swell. In severe cases, the kidneys can't keep up with the resulting volumes of dilute urine. Water intoxication then occurs, possibly causing headache, vomiting, and in rare instances, seizures or death. But that's a pretty extreme situation. So too little water's no good and too much water's no good either. On a normal day-to-day -day basis, 
Maintaining a well-hydrated system is easy to manage for those of us fortunate enough to have access to clean drinking water. For a long time, conventional wisdom said that we should drink eight glasses a day. That estimate has since been fine-tuned. Now, the consensus is that the amount of water we need to imbibe depends largely on our weight and environment. The recommended daily intake varies from between 2.5 to 3.7 liters of water for men and about 2 to 2.7 liters for women. That's also based on where you live. Obviously, you're in a hotter temperature, you're going to sweat more. But extreme cold, you can lose a lot of water by breathing as well. So in the extremes, you're going to need more water. A range that is pushed up or down if we are healthy, active, old, or overheating. While water is the healthiest hydrator, other beverages, even those with caffeine like coffee or tea, replenish fluids as well. And water within food makes up about a fifth of our daily H2O intake. Fruits and vegetables like strawberries, cucumbers, and even broccoli are over 90% water and can supplement liquid intake while providing valuable nutrients and fiber. Drinking well might also have various long-term benefits. Studies have shown that optimal hydration can lower the chance of stroke help manage diabetes, and potentially reduce the risk of certain types of cancer. Although the cancer, there's no direct link to cancer, but leading an active, healthy lifestyle, drinking plenty of water, has been shown to decrease your risk of cancer. No matter what, getting the right amount of liquid makes a world of difference in how you'll feel, think, and function day to day. I hope you enjoyed this. If you like these type of videos, hit the subscribe and like button and there'll be more on the way.